Hi, welcome back to another part of uh, making a uh, shepherd's crooking ram's horn. So, we've got this section here, uh, a bit better than it was. What I'm going to do now is take a lot of material off. And um, I think uh, probably the next thing would be to uh, perhaps do the nose. We've still got a hole to drill there, straighten this end off. But um, I think I'll do that the last operation because while I'm doing this nose I don't want any heat coming over here and um, deforming anything uh, with, a, with a hole in it. So that's the next stage. Once we've ground this down quite a bit we'll come back and you'll see uh, uh, how we turn a nose. Right we've removed an awful lot of material now um, clean the whole horn up, uh, mark the centre for drilling later on. Um, what we're going to do now is put on a little jig for bending the nose. And the idea is you have a plate, I'll show you this once we've set it all up, uh, clamp that in position, you heat your horn and then you use a, a G clamp, not a Z clamp, sorry a sash clamp to pull the horn over that uh, bolt or that pin there. Uh, the system works very very well. Um, as far as I know it was invented by uh, Daffod Davies. It's produced by Daffod Davies of um, I think it's Mid Wales. Excellent stick maker and uh, he's come up with that brilliant idea for turning the nose. In the past what people used to do is put some mole grips on, uh, heat the horn up and obviously the, the horn was in the vise and you'd slowly pull the um, the horn over. It wasn't a, a system I liked, it wasn't a system that was uh, particularly um, uh, good for me or you know I was successful with. Um, the um, a great stick maker Gordon Flintoff used to use that system he had no problem but obviously I wasn't as good as Gordon so there we go. Uh, but this works very well and if you want to turn a nose and I could probably guarantee you if, you, if you're very careful and you follow the instructions, 99% uh, success rate in turning a nose. Um, I've had no breakages since I used these uh, plates and I've got two of them. Um, I used to do a lot of horn and uh, would have two on the go at once. So um, that's the next thing. We'll get things set up and then you can see um, how things work. Right, okay, you can see the idea here. We've got everything nicely clamped down. Uh, I've actually got some uh, steel plate around the, um, the handle. I don't want heat getting into that, so we've clad that. That also helps it uh, clamp to um, this, uh, this, this plate. And we've got a sash clamp on. We're going to heat around this pin, but only on the front. We're not going to go around the back whatsoever. We're going to heat that and just slowly allow the heat to penetrate through and very slowly just pull the sash clamp up. As we progress and start to move this uh, horn over, uh, we're going to move um, this sash clamp into other holes. I don't know if you can see them or not. We've got a succession of holes drilled in here and you can get a different angle with your sash clamp and that will slowly pull the nose over. Um, the main thing is what we have to do is keep checking the back. If we have any cracking or anything that appears in the back, and this is more likely to happen with buffalo, but it will happen with the ram's horn, um, we've got to dismantle this, uh, sand or grind the, the crack out, and then carry on and make sure we've got plenty of heat in here. So we're going to start heating this area up now, and then when we make a bit of progress, we'll come back and you can see what's happening. Right, so we've just started heating. Um, you can see as we start to pull the G clamp in, um, we're going to get a build up of horn either side of that pin. Uh, in fact, we'll tell you how you position that pin later on. Uh, so, every so often, what you're going to have to do is take this horn out, clean this area up, get rid of this build up of horn because that's going to stop the, um, the nose coming over, and then progress. So you can see what the operation is. I will keep coming back as we make progress. Okay so what we're doing here now is 
we've just moved the sash clamp down a couple of holes and to keep the, the horn where uh, we've made progress we've just put a little block in behind there and then we're going to swing that back and put the sash clamp on take this block out and I will continue heating and just, just pull in. Uh, I can just tap this down a wee bit. So it's on. And there we go. So we won't make you sit through all the heating, but uh, we'll progress and come right back. Right, as we progress and pull this horn over, uh, this sash clamp is going to want to, to slide off what is becoming the nose. So the easiest thing to do is just put a little block of aluminium or something in there, pop a sash clamp up. Uh, that holds that in position so you've got, it's fixed there, it's fixed here and you can keep winding in. You have to keep checking the back. I have given it a, a bit of a rub with uh, uh, a little sanding disc just to make sure and uh, we'll go back. And you don't have to pull this right away over because if you get it to a certain position you can leave that then come back in the morning, heat it up, and then just put it between some vice jaws, tweak it up, and press it in. Um, so that's something you can do. So we'll carry on now. Right, so we've we've moved the sash clamp again, and I tend to sort of skip uh, and, and go two holes at a time as I position this, and that seems to be okay. We're still, oops, sorry, we're still watching the, um, the back of the horn there, still heated. I've only had to clear that, uh, let's call it welt, out of there once and um, we can keep uh, pulling over. So I think we'll have one more crack at this and bring it in and then leave it for um, the morning and then that can go in the, um, uh, the jaws of a vice and be finally closed up to where we want it. Um, the one thing you might have to do is the nose might be drifting off centre so uh, it might want truing up uh, once it's all cold but um, that's, I think that's part of the action of the, the, the sash clamp pulling it over. So we'll carry on and we'll be right back. Right so there we go, I think I'm going to leave it at that now. Um, we have cleaned the back up a little bit but there's no cracks in there. Uh, we've cleaned this inner area as well to take a bit of uh, unwanted material out and you see, I'll just bring the camera around if I can and let you see around the back. Let's see if you can see it. There you go. So nice and clean around the back there, that's what you want and uh, we'll leave that now. and uh, come back to it tomorrow morning, pop it in, um, we'll have to heat it obviously, pop it in vice jaw, uh, close it up a wee bit and then shape that area up. What you might find also is that the shape we had on the wooden block, um, you might have, that might have just opened up a bit if the horn's taken some heat, so it might have just moved. So it may be that we put that back on that block as well and close it up but uh, we'll see how uh, we go. So um, we're getting close now to uh, the finish. We've still got to drill the, um, the handle, prepare a shank uh, but we've done all that. We've done the uh, pre preparation of a, a hazel um, in previous videos so we're not going to go over that and uh, the main thing is you've seen how we um, have worked a horn. So there's still cleaning up to do. Um, once we get the uh, shank attached, we can work on the neck, get that to, to the dimension we want, and we'll probably take some more material off the, um, the actual horn itself. Um, there are just a couple of little areas where the original creases in the, um, the concave part of the, the horn uh, are just, just ev evident, and in fact there's, uh, there's a blood blister in there as well. So I don't want to go too deep, I don't want to break into that blood blister, but um, there's a bit of cleaning up and shaping and what have you to do. So you can see it's uh, working, uh, the bigger horns is a long drawn out um, affair, but uh, well worth it if everything works. Um, some horns are really nice and clean and some will cause you problems. And what we're finding I think on the whole these days is that um, 
we're getting more and more problems in ram's horn I think that's down to sort of farming practices. Uh, the rams aren't as old as they used to be. They're not kept out on the uh, uh, the tops and the fells to die naturally. Um, some of them are probably um, forced on um, to put weight on, and I think it all has an effect on um, on the horn. So that's it for now. Um, we'll, we'll come back uh, tomorrow. Well, maybe tomorrow, and um, carry on with the nose. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, we'll see you again.